So what's going on YouTube? I'm gonna do you try to do a short video as I possibly can here real quick. Um, I'll explain to you what's going on. Uh, to do this, what we're gonna be doing first off is we're doing a droop shock with the inner spring pin spring mod. These are the shocks that I was running on my TRX4. I ended up taking them off and going with the stock uh, TRX4 shocks. Uh, back on it to get it lowered back down I wanted to lower it back down a little bit and that's why I chose these shocks because they were really good smooth uh, very well working shock on the TRX4 and <clears throat> I'm actually doing this to have an extra I want to try the inner spring mod uh, on my Gen 8 with the Cherokee um, and that's why I'm doing it with these shocks. They were spare and they were off and they worked real well to begin with and they didn't leak or anything like that bad. Uh, and they worked real smooth and I like the spring setup on it. Will work probably pretty good for the Gen 8 also. Uh, so anyways, this one I've already done. You know, this is what they call the pin spring mod. There's no oil in this. I went ahead and drained the oil out. Uh, it was dirty anyways because I had several trail runs and use uh, uses on it on the TRX4. So... Uh, there is ways that you can do to save your shock oil, but I have a bunch of uh, spare 10 and 20 weight shock oil, so it doesn't really matter if I lose the shock oil in this or not. This one's already done. You can see this is, I think these were, uh, hold on a second, let me measure them for you to be 100% for sure. Let me find my digital micrometer here. Um, I think these were 100 millimeter shocks. I got my, I'm going to have to re-zero it back out uh, zero it again here uh, what's going on with my mic my digital caliper here uh, huh battery might be getting low in it but it's pretty close so these were I've already checked pretty close to the stock length of the gen 8 shock so it was like a millimeter difference or so maybe a little more um, yeah, at 87, so these are almost a 90 millimeter. I think the Gen 8s were like 90-something 90, 90 millimeter. So with the pin spring mod, this brought me about to the stock shock height of the Gen 8, Gen 8 uh, shocks. So I'll show you how you go about doing this. Let me get my cheap digital caliper here down. I'm not going to need that now. So what I did was I went to the uh, Dollar Tree. And I picked up a lot of four pack for a dollar pins. You can see this one I've already taken the spring out of. You want to make sure you get four matching pins so you get the same springs. Uh, you just take the spring off of your pin here. And we'll go ahead and tear one apart and I'll show you what I mean. Just going to have to do a thorough video of doing it. This one's, that one's uh, already been taken apart. So we're going to remove it from... The pin spring from this, uh, take your cap off, there's your spring, sits on your, uh, you know, your tube or whatever, your ink tube, that's the spring you're going to be using, okay? Uh, if you got like a really long shock, sometimes you have to use like two springs, I, I've seen, but anyways, and then this pin... You know, they still write and everything, so I'll keep them laying around. It, you know, I can take the spring back out of the shock and reuse it. So, we're going to go ahead and get this stuff out of the way. Uh, and then this shock, hold on, I'll go ahead and mic it again real quick here. Um, get my mic turn, my digital caliper. I mean, I don't know why I call it a mic. My digital caliper. So, I went from 87, the one with the uh, pin spring mod is 87. Let me spin this around make it easier from eyelet to eyelet about you know pr pretty close so this one is roughly 95 so we lost uh see you might as well say 95 is this shock so they weren't 100 millimeter shocks they were 95 so you know roughly turn my, my caliper back off you know, 87, so you didn't lose that much going with the pin spring. These aren't like super powerful spring, which is what I wanted. But what you do is you're going to need some needle nose pliers. 
I use a crappy cheap wore out Allen wrench and then just a some kind of shop rag shop towel something of that nature so and then I got this to work on it's on my fab table but I still didn't want to get the you know I'm using this now uh, for doing shocks because this this soaks up stuff and I can wash it in the in the washer uh, So because you're gonna probably get shock oil. I'm gonna move the camera here So I got a little better view and I can see the work So we're gonna pull our Shocks apart you just take pull your spring up all shocks pretty much the same take your little spring retainer lay it up here Take your spring lay it up there uh, You can see this is the one that I've already done the mod to uh, see when I pull it down it automatically goes back up okay see that's what that's that's your inner the inner spring doing its job here okay so anyways we got that this is the one that it's already done to so we'll put it back together I just want to show you guys how it worked put your spring retainer back on and then you're gonna have a pusher and a puller that's basically what you're doing with a droop set of now, supposedly this works really well. Like I said, there's no shock oil in here. I got to add the oil to it, but you know that that one's done, one and done. So we have we're going to do one on camera here. See, this is our regular the 95 millimeter. So same difference. Lift up on your spring, pull your spring retainer, pull your spring off. Okay, you can see this shock still is working good. I'm gonna wipe it down real good here with the rag clean it off get the crud off of it uh, there you can see okay that's how your shock should work should have a little bit return on them uh, so might as well go ahead I'm gonna get me a little container here we'll dump the shock oil in I've got a little container right here that I've been dumping shock oil in because this is a clean container uh, if this is clean shock wool, we could probably reuse it and put it back in here. I don't know. Uh, I'm just, you can see it's not real clean. Uh, it's kind of cruddy looking and everything. Probably still usable, but we'll go ahead and put fresh shock wool in it later. I'm just doing the pin, pin spring mod later, and then I'll put the shock wool in later because I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be trying these out for a while. So, you got your shock wool out, you got your shock cap, you know, just work your shock. Uh, Get all your oil out you want your needle loose pliers and you'll want your rag and you want to wrap your rag around your shock shaft and your needle loose pliers get a hold of it that way you don't mar your shock shaft up your allen tool run it through your eyelet on your bottom of your shock squeeze your needle loose pliers down and just start loosening and then fling your allen wrench out just like that uh, and this just unscrews your. You got to take your eyelet off your bottom because you got to put your shock. Okay, your shaft got to go up through. Uh, just push it through gentle, like. I always use my needle nose pliers. Grab a hold of it. Just pull it easy. You don't want to rip your O-rings. There's your shock shaft. Okay, so essentially, boom, you got your shock tore apart. Okay. Take your spring, slides on your shock shaft that easily. That's all there is to it. Use your piston right here. Right there you go. There's your pin spring droop mod. And we're going to grab some assembly lube, uh, shock assembly lube, silicone shock assembly lube to put them back together. This keeps them working free and everything. This is rock shock stuff I bought years and years ago. I bought two tubes of it. It's just shock assembly uh, lube. And we're going to take it. Get a little bit on your finger. And then you're just going to lube it up here. A little bit of grease. And also help seal up your O-rings. Uh, take your excess shove down in there. It's just silicone. Going in with silicone shock oil. You'll get your kind of lined up. And just push it. Just like that. That's all there is to it. Slides it right back down through your O-rings. And you can see... Let me move this out of the way. Set that on so we don't get crud in it. Okay? Just like that. So, we're going to go ahead. Going to pull this down. Going to get our... Uh, working in gloves is a pain. I just hate getting silicone oil all over my hands. 
I don't know what it is. I hate getting silicone oil on me. So, let's see here. Get this fidgeted here off camera real quick. Get this set. Uh, I'll get it started. Maybe. Uh, let me get my... Eyelid on here and get it started off camera because it's hard to do this. Okay, so got, I got it started. So you can take now that I got it started, take your rag, push down. Whoops, push too hard. Now I can pull this out. Okay, it is a little harder with the spring holding tension back on it. Get a hold of it, slide this farther back this way. There we go. Take your Allen wrench and just start tightening, just like reverse of when you took it apart. Screw your eyelet down tight, just like that. You'll know when it starts getting there. You can even use your fingers, that way you don't strip it out. There we go, just go till it stops. That's an internal spring, pin spring mod on a shock, right there. There you go. So, it's simple. I'm going to wipe off my parts here real quick. There's not really a whole lot to it, guys. And then you would just put your shock oil in and bleed your shock regularly. People do it different. You know, everybody seems like they do their shocks different than the other person. So, um, then it's just reverse assembly. It is a little bit more of a pain in the butt to pull that down, to hold it with your fingers. You got to get your shock retainer, your spring retainer, I'm sorry, on here. Um, man, it is a lot harder to do with gloves. <laughs> Especially these latex gloves. They're slippery. Um, I may end up having to take the glove off. I can't get traction with the glove. I just hate getting silicone. I don't know what it is about silicone. It just, ugh. I don't know. I hate getting it on my fingers. So we're going to do this so I can actually hold it. Because I can't get a grip with this glove on. So pull it down. And then... Spring retainer. And these spring retainers are a nightmare to get on here. Uh, okay, this is a tight fitting spring retainer. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Look at that. You gotta put your spring on first, dum dum. So, anyway, <laughs> there you go. So, then you put your spring retainer back on. God darn. And we got it. There we go. There you go. Now you gotta pushing, pulling action spring put a cap back on like i said i'll have to put oil in it later when i go to run these you know, i'm just doing this to try it I've, I've never done this pin spring mods i got a buddy that's running them says he likes the pin spring mod especially if you got a lot of uh, heavy weight up top uh so that's there you go just like this one same thing Gonna end up with the same height as that's why you want to run the same internal spring. Uh, that's a pain spring mod with like a droop set up. So it'll, it'll be semi droop um, because you're still, you know, got your travel and you're not losing travel because um, it'll pull up and it'll pull down the same way. So you're not you're not losing anything. Uh, you know, it's just a droop setup basically is what it is. So that's how you do it. Pin spring. There's two of them done. It's really easy. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, the Gen 8 has a lot of body roll, so if I end up running it with a bunch of body roll, I'm hoping maybe these will eliminate the body roll on it, uh, on on the on the Gen 8, because they I don't they really do have a lot of body roll movement, um, and I like it, you know, body roll because it looks good like a real one to one, but sometimes too much of anything is a bad thing. So I just wanted to do that quick video for you guys and show you the pin spring mod doing it. I see a lot of people always ask about it on the forums. So I figured the dungeon would post up a video with the, with the mod. So anyways, from the RC dungeon, that's what you got for a pin spring mod, guys. Peace.